Hello, 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 hello. Now, first and foremost, this recipe is a little bit smelly. You know why? Because Mukhodu smells, period. Mukhodu smells, guys. Mukhodu wank. It's just the nature of it. No matter how much you try to clean it, it's going to smell. But anyway, the people wanted it. I listened, and here I am giving you this basic, simple Mukhodu recipe. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first step is we're going to wash out our mukhodu, make sure that it's clean. But if yours comes straight from the freezer like mine, then just make some warm water and cold water, nothing too hot. And then let it soak for about 30 minutes before you pick it apart. Basically separate it because of it's stuck together. And if yours is fresh, then listen, worry not, skip this step and just go straight into washing it out. Oh, and by fresh, I mean that yours isn't frozen. I mean, yours is literally just nice and fresh and comes straight from the cow or the sheep or the goat or whatever type of mohoru you prefer. Anyway, as you can see, this gunk needs to be washed out. So what I'm basically doing is washing and cleaning. And you're going to repeat this step a couple of times, maybe four to five times, because you want to make sure you clean out all the little funny rocks, the smell, so that it just doesn't become as potent as it is when you first started because I can guarantee you it smells bad. Anyway, as you keep washing it, you're also going to now take out all that fat. And I just like this feeling. I don't know why it's weird, but hey, you take out all this fat to make sure you separate it. Some people like the fat, you know, maybe I should say you just do whatever you want to do in terms of you want to keep it. Do you want to separate it? It's up to you. It still won't kill you if you eat some of that fat. Most people like it because apparently it adds some sort of texture. And let me just assure you that texture is not for me. Okay, not for me. Anyway, once you've thoroughly washed out your mohodu, you're going to put it in a pot. You're going to mix some boiling water with some cold water. Fill it up up until it covers your mohodu. Then take it outside because the flies are literally going to become friends with you if you leave this in the house. Make sure the heat is a little bit high, but not too high. You don't want it to like kill your stuff. And then add some salt, add some pepper, mix it up and then close the pot. Once the water has evaporated, you're going to bring in another jar of boiling water and you're basically going to repeat this step for the next three and a half hours. And then in the meantime, you're going to chop up your onion however you feel fit, however you want to chop it up. And then once the water has evaporated for I don't know how many times, I think it's going to be four times you're going to be doing that process. And then once it's like literally at the bottom and there's like no water left, you add a little bit of water, mix it with your onion like I did. Let it shimmer up, not on a high heat. Now you're going to turn the heat a little bit down and then let it shimmer for the next 30 to 35 minutes. And then once it's done, seal the pot, let it sit there, shimmer. And then, voila, this is what your mukhodu is going to look like. It should be tender. It should be soft. It shouldn't be thick. It shouldn't be tough. But hey, a lot of people tend to get it wrong because they leave it for about two hours. And you need to let this run for a very long time. Some people use about four to five hours. It also depends on the quantity of your mukhodu. So make sure you... Are mindful of that. Also, I'm not the type of person who prefers her mohodu with gravy. I prefer it with just samp and as dry as it may seem right now on your screen. Hey, bars. Okay, calm down. Anyway, if you do like it with a little bit of gravy, by all means, you can add your chicken or beef stock with some water or your packet soup. Make sure you shimmer it for the same amount of time, 30 to 35 minutes at a very low heat. Then it should be able to still tear like this you can tear it with your hands this is how soft it ultimately is and if you do not have a gas stove outside do not worry as long as you are able to keep the flies away in your house i don't know how you're going to do it but thick bleach tends to work you should be fine i hope you enjoyed this video i'll see you on the next one